This video was re-recorded because the sound cut out halfway through. This is section 21.4, the rates of radioactive decay. We did have a chapter on kinetics, but nuclear decay is very different than chemical decay. When you have a nuclear decay, it is independent of temperature, chemical form, and also pressure. You simply cannot stop a reaction from occurring. What it does is it obeys first order kinetics. So we'll be able to use what we learned in chapter 14. We're not going to use the format y is equal to mx plus b. We will use a different format. They use the symbol n, the amount or count at time t. Here is the amount or count at time zero. We still have our rate constant and we have time. So we have a couple examples to do to show you how this works. You will normally receive a half-life and you will use it in order to calculate the rate constant. So before we get into a problem, let's talk about what really is a half-life. Your text does a very beautiful illustration where they show 100 little squares, meaning that is our amount at time zero. And they go through and they say, this is one half. Well, that is a half-life. If I drop this down, I see the half-life in terms of years. If I drop it to the y-axis, I see I have gone from 10 as a mass of grams to 5 as a mass of grams. So that is a half-life. If I go for yet another half-life and I drop it over to the side, I will see that now I have 2.5 grams. One half times one half is one quarter of the 10. And this can continue on and on. The next one is one eighth. Sometimes you can do a problem by just looking at the amounts. I'll show what that means as we go further through. The table on the right, it shows you the half lives. If you've ever heard it's very difficult to store the waste of a nuclear reactor. Well, the half-life of many of the isotopes involved is on the order of 10 to the ninth years, and that does pose a storage problem. The problem we're gonna do next is about cobalt-60. It's typical of the kind of problem you might see. So cobalt treatments are used in medicine to treat cancer. Cobalt decays with the emission of a beta particle and a gamma ray, and it's the gamma rays that are very dangerous because they don't discriminate. They destroy both cancerous and normal cells, so you really have to carefully aim the beam. So let's start this with just how we used to do things before. My initial amount is 3.42 micrograms. I'm reading the problem. We want to know how much remains after 15 years, and so we have a time of 15 years, and our n at time t, the amount, that's what we're looking for, and it has a half-life of 5.27 years. So problem solving. What I did is I wrote down what do I know so I could clearly see what I do not know. Now I do know that I'm going to need a rate constant. So what I'll do next is I will use the equation for half-life, 0.693 over K. I'll rearrange it so I'll have 0.693 over T one half and putting in the numbers, 0.693 divided by 5.27 years. That'll give me a value of K of 0.131 years minus one. So you kind of wonder, why didn't I just blast through the problem? Well, one of the things to take away with you from this class is be careful how you solve a problem. You may have to explain it to someone. You may make a mistake and you want to find it. So we really want to teach good problem solving skills. So the next step is we're trying to find how much cobalt remains after the 15 years. So there is my equation for first order decay. And what I will do is I will put in the values. I'm looking for NT. My N0 is 3.42 micrograms. My K is a 0 0.131 years and my time is 15.0 years. 
So there's all my features in there. What I want to do is solve this problem. So what I will have as I work through the math is ln of the amount at time t divided by 3.42 is equal to minus 1.965. To clear the ln, I'll have n at time t over 3.42 is e to the minus 1.965, and that is equal to 0 0.140. Finally, to get my amount of n at time t, I will have 0 0.140 times 3.42 micrograms, and I will come up with 0 0.479 micrograms. This is a very, very typical problem. And again, it had three steps. One of them was tabulate your information. The second was use the half-life to find the rate constant. And finally, the third one is substitute into the first order kinetic equation. You might see a different sort of problem. And this relates to what we had on the original slide. It said, if you have a 10 gram sample of strontium 90, how long does it take to become 2.5 grams? Now you may recognize that 10 divided by two is five, five divided by two is 2.5. So what happened? Well, we went 29 years, we went 29 years, so we have a grand total of 58 years for the amount of time. Notice, I did not have to use the integrated rate law. I recognize the fact that 2.5 is one of the amounts that if you take 10 and go to 5, 5 to 2.5, then you could take it to 1.25 and it could go on and on and on. Sometimes the question is asked in this manner in a professional exam. They're not there to have you be in a course solving a hard problem. They're there to see, do you understand understand what a half-life is, okay? So before we do our last problem on radioactive dating, your book has a very nice figure that talks about how carbon-14 becomes incorporated into the food chain. That is how we do something called radioactive dating. So the story is cosmic rays. What they do is they enter the atmosphere and they collide with atoms like nitrogen and they will capture one of the neutrons and it will form carbon-14. Carbon-14 will react with oxygen and form, I always call it the labeled CO2, but it is carbon CO2, which has the carbon-14 isotope. That can undergo decay. Sure, there's more here. Animals and people take in the C14 by eating plants, and down on the bottom, they talk about how a decay will eventually occur as the animal decomposes. So we really want to talk to you about carbon-14 dating. You can date with many different sorts of elements, but carbon-14 is the classic for our class. A, really a Gen Chem class. So let's say I found this wooden artifact. Wood has cellulose in it. Cellulose has carbon in it. And when we look at it, we see how many dis disintegrations it has per minute per gram centigrade. That is a very long unit. But realize when we're going to be doing the actual calculation, it will be an LN function. So these units are going to drop out. So I'm gonna just write down what I normally would if I was doing this problem. We have the number of counts at time T is 10.8. We want to know what is the age of the artifact. So we're looking at time T and they tell us that living wood has an activity of 15.3. And again, I left the units out because they are going to drop out as we do the division. So what else have they told us? They've told us that T one half is 57, 30 years. Now again, I'm problem solving. I've written down the information that I have so that I can clearly see what I need to do. I need a rate constant. So again, for a first order process, T one half is 0.693 divided by K. K 
k is going to be equal to 0 0.693 divided by t one half and k will once again be equal to 0.693 divided by 5730 years. Numerically speaking, the k I get is 0 0.0001209 years minus one. Notice the similarity in problem solving. I've tried to point it out throughout our entire course. There's usually a method, tabulate your data, Get your data in the right form. Think of when you had to turn things into Kelvin. Think of when you had to turn things into atmospheres. It's the same process here. So now let's continue to get our answer. With first order kinetics, it's NT over N0, the LN, and then it is minus K times T. So let's put our things in. We have the LN, and now we have NT is 10.8, N0 is 15.3. We have a minus K of a negative 0 0.0001209 years minus one times T. Well, I'll take the LN of that side. It'll be a negative 0 0.3483 is going to be equal to a negative 0, 0, 0, 1209t. When I do my math one over the other, I'll come up with 2987 years. And since this isn't a real exact method, I'll come up with approximately 3000 years for the age of the artifact. Now, again, it's not the most accurate method, but think about wood, think about a tree, how you normally would count the rings of a tree. And that's really tough to do on the trunk if you've ever looked at some of these. So this is called radioactive, radioactive dating. And this one used um, not carbon, let's see, not carbon 13. It used carbon 14 for the dating. There are other isotopes that can be used. Well, that wraps up this section. What did this section try to teach us? It told us that for radioactive decay, it is first order. Um, it told us that we could use a form of the rate law, ln and t over n0 is equal to minus kt, and it allows us to find either the counts or the half or the rate or how old something is by using the half-life to find the k.